Welcome back folks, this is Shane. In today's video, I'm doing a full review of the Minbo M2 from Seven Rhymes. This is a two-way bi-directional mini shotgun microphone and it will work on anything with a 3.5 millimeter input jack. Let's get into it. Welcome back folks, this is Shane. First up, I just wanted to say Seven Rhymes have sent this out for the review. They're not paying me in addition to letting me keep this. They're not seeing the video before it goes live, nor have they given me anything to say other than Derek wrote a little handwritten note on the back that says, all the best to Shane. So thank you, mate, I appreciate it. One of the things that interested me about this microphone is as you can see on the close up, we have two capsules, one at each end. And the fact that it should work on almost any 3.5 millimeter input device. So whether that's a camera or some sort of other recorder, that's pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to giving this a shot. We're gonna do some vlogging tests with this as well, including an unboxing. I'll leave timestamps to everything in the description below so you can skip ahead if you so choose. But firstly, let's see what we get in the box. All right, so one of the cool things already is we get a case for it as well. This is relatively tough, which I liked, very similar to that of the GoPro cases they're including with the new GoPro Hero 9. So already I like the uh, durability of this free case, which is a great thing to have included. Ooh, wow, all right. So this was gonna be one of my questions. I was hoping it had dead cats provided, and it does, which is killer. So if we go outside, well, when we go outside in just a few minutes, we can test to see how well they work. Now in included, we get the two dead cats, we get the 3.5 millimeter cable, which looks like we just have to open this to get the cable out. And yep, it looks like a good cable as well, which is good. Included, we also get a shock mount for the microphone as well, and the microphone itself, which is in there. Wow, geez. Ugh. So the case is really good. It actually supports the microphone. It doesn't sort of, that's, that's not gonna come loose. So that's awesome. <laughs> Oh man, I shouldn't have put it back in. All right, so there we go. So that's the microphone on the shock mount. This will just clip in, which looks like right in the middle here, I'm tipping, somewhere around here. Yep. And it's really sturdy. That is not going to accidentally come out of there. And it feels really, really sturdy. And it kind of just floats on in the middle there. So overall, I think that's a really great design and this will just go on straight on top of the camera. One of the biggest reasons why I wanted to test this microphone was the fact that not only can we use both of the capsules at the same time for that figure eight polar pattern, which will allow both of the microphones to be as sensitive on either side, but we also get super cardioid polar pattern. Now what this will do, if it's facing me like this, it means it's gonna try to block the sound coming in from all other directions. So if you're vlogging, the idea is it's only gonna pick up what's on this side of the microphone and not what's behind it. And we're gonna test that out in the real world. When it comes to the figure eight polar pattern, that may be very handy if you're out, say, recording some ambient sounds or if you're gonna be also behind the microphone and someone else is in front of it. So if you're doing some vlogging with a friend and you're behind the camera, for example, you can be talking into the back microphone, they could be talking from the front and that will also capture a lot more ambient sound from around the camera itself, rather than just being as directional as it would be if you were just using the front microphone. What I'm gonna do is leave some of the specifications on screen, but I'll cover most of the important stuff. So as I mentioned, we get a super cardioid and bi-directional polar pattern. We get a frequency response of 60 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So 20 kilohertz is the highest end of human hearing and 60 isn't the lowest. So it does roll out a little bit of low end as 20 would be the lowest, but I think that's probably because as you're walking around with the camera, you might get a little bit of handling noise still transferring through to the microphone. We'll test that out as well in this video, but odds are that will just help sort of get rid of those low end rumbles that you don't want in your recording. So yeah, that's a pretty decent polar pattern. No problems there at all. We get a maximum sound pressure level of 105 dB. So imagine you're at a venue and there's a band playing, for example, as long as you're not right in front of that guitar amplifier, probably up at around 110 dB, 105 won't have any problems at all. So it can handle a good amount of volume, which is also a really cool thing. Another huge advantage of this microphone is it only weighs 45 grams, and I'll leave the conversion in ounces or pounds on screen. It's super light, which is fantastic. It's really cool. The operating temperature of this microphone is between zero and 50 degrees Celsius. So if you live in the snowy parts of Canada, 
might not be the best choice, <laughs> at least if you're outdoors anyway. So I'm gonna show you how to hook this up to a mirrorless camera. I'm gonna be using my G85, but in the test, you're not only gonna see it with this camera, I wanna try it with the GoPro Hero 8 Media Mod, as I'd like to test these microphones within a couple of different situations. So one of the best things about this is you take off the little clip here, slide it onto the hot shoe mount. You can lock it down just by turning this little uh, screw thing here, whatever that's called, and we're good to go. So we can hook the microphone up. The output is on the side that goes into there. And then we hook the other side into the camera, into the microphone input. Now the Panasonic G85 and most mirrorless cameras allow you to internally turn up or down the preamps. I always like to record with this camera because it has fairly hot preamps. I'm gonna be setting this to negative 12 dB internally and that's still pretty hot on this camera. So there will be some limiting possibly from the camera, but we should get a really great sound. We'll also try it with that GoPro Hero 8 Media Mod. Now, being that I'm gonna be using this outside, I'm gonna be in front of the camera. I'm gonna be using the front microphone first and foremost. So we're just gonna see how this dead cat fits. Probably should have put that on actually before I did everything else, but you know, it's easier to see with this off. And that actually looks like it's on there pretty sturdy. Uh, one of the limitations of the dead cat already, I've noticed there's no sort of uh, like a piece of string that you can tighten it or anything like that, but it feels pretty good. Worst case scenario, if, any, if there is any wind noise, you could easily just get a rubber band or elastic band sort of tie around it and you should be good to go. I'm actually gonna put both of them on even though I'm not gonna be using the one on the back primarily, but we will test that out in this video for some creek and, and ambient sort of uh, nature sounds as well. We're gonna go to the park and that's it. How easy is that? Let's get out of here. Right, so let's try an outdoor vlogging test. There's so many flies at this park, but I keep coming back because it is absolutely beautiful out here. I'm using the Panasonic G85. Now I've got it set to cardioid polar pickup mode. So it's just using the front capsule and there's a really busy street behind the camera, which is supposed to help isolate the audio just from the front side of the microphone. So we're gonna see if that's the case. If you can hear a lot of cars going past, I'd be surprised, but it is pretty loud. So odds are some of that is gonna creep into the audio. So this is only using the microphone facing me. I'm also gonna shorten the selfie stick now just to see how it sounds. And now I brought the camera about half the distance closer again, so you can get a sense of how it sounds. If you've got a wider angle lens than this 15 millimeter, you could probably bring the camera even closer, but I have a feeling this is about as close as you'll need to see me at least anyway. So yeah, not many people will vlog with a camera this close to their face. Up next, we're doing an off-axis rejection test of the microphone in that super cardioid polar pattern. You should be able to hear the cars behind me a lot louder now. So what I'm gonna do is turn the camera and the microphone around so it's facing the opposite direction. And now you'll get a sense of just how much noise cancellation you'll get thanks to that polar pattern. And I'm gonna bring it back to the front again so you can see how it sounds facing me. And now I'm testing the microphone out in figure eight polar pattern mode, which means it's gonna work from the front and the back. And the reason this is gonna be really handy is if you like to get behind the camera at some point in time and continue to talk, it's gotta not only pick up your own voice from behind the camera now, but also all of the sound in front of it. Now, you should really pick your polar pattern depending on your situation. So if you're mostly in front of the camera, turn that back microphone off, unless of course you wanna do some ambient sound recordings, which we're gonna test now. It's a bit of a walk actually, but I'll get down there. Up next, I'm gonna walk uphill and we're gonna test out the handling noise to see if anything transfers through to the microphone. This is usually low end thuds or thumps that you'll hear 
So I've got the selfie stick still attached to the camera, but I'm holding it with my left hand, holding the camera with my right hand, and just walking forward without doing the ninja walk, just walking as I would normally. I'll shut up for a second so you can hear how it sounds. Might not look it, but it's steeper than it looks. <laughs> Up next, we're doing an audio test of the built-in microphone on the GoPro Hero 8 Media Mod, which in my opinion completely sucks. So this is just the front-facing microphone on the mod. Now I'm gonna plug in the microphone and show you how it sounds. And now you're listening to the GoPro Hero 8 Black with the seven rhymes shotgun microphone. It's actually on the side of the GoPro Hero 8 Media Mod because I did notice that the dead cat was just a little bit too big and you could see it if I mounted it onto the top or if I used wide or super view. So just be wary of that. But in linear mode, this is how it looks and you don't see the microphone. And hopefully the most important thing is that it sounds better than that crappy onboard microphone that's built into the GoPro Hero 8 Media Mod. I guess I'll find out and I'll comment on that later on. One of the things I like to do in these tests is throw in another microphone into the mix. So you're listening to the Emco Plus shotgun microphone on top of the GoPro Hero 8. Let me know if you can hear a difference in the comments. So I'm going to give you my final thoughts about this after listening and watching back all of the footage. So in terms of straight up audio quality in cardioid polar pattern mode, so just the front capsule, it sounded fantastic. It's definitely one of the more premium microphones for that application. It sounds fantastic. There wasn't any handling noise thanks to this really great shock mount as well. Even on the test where I was walking with it, literally with my one hand on the selfie stick, one hand like this, just walking along, I didn't hear any thuds coming through the microphone at all. And that's a sign of a really good shock mount as well as just a really smart EQ curve on the frequency response. So it gets that right. In figure eight mode, it sounded great for the ambient sounds as well. When I moved it over to the GoPro, it was a huge upgrade over the built-in media mod microphone and it also sounded nicer than the Emco Plus. Now the Emco Plus is a really hot microphone. I didn't realize just how much output this microphone sends to the preamp on the GoPro. So yeah, that was almost sounded like it was clipping or a little too hot, while this sounded much nicer. And it's always easier to bring up quieter sort of audio recordings than have to bring down something that's clipped or distorted because you can't recover your audio in that fashion. So in my opinion, this was a far better choice than the Emco Plus, and it will make for a really great mic if you're gonna be doing any sort of vlogging. I love the fact it's got the switch on the top. You can easily set it to front microphone only or that figure eight polar pattern, and it worked great in both modes. Now, there's one mo more mode I would love to see on this. It's not a big deal, but if you're always behind the camera, say commentating on things, you can't sort of just spin the microphone around. I wish it had a, an extra cardioid polar pattern mode for the back microphone only. But you know what? Who cares? It's not really that big of a deal. I think considering, you know, not only how cool this looks, it's got that, it's just got a super cool design. It's built well, it sounds good, and you get two very usable options on the top of the microphone. And you could even use this as a shotgun microphone in the studio. As long as you get a longer cable, you could hang it over your head and use it, no problems at all. So overall, it's a great microphone. I can highly recommend it. I don't really have any major criticisms about it. I don't know what to say. It works and it works really well. So let me know your thoughts on the audio quality. If it didn't sound good, I would let you know. And again, sorry for the shaky outdoor footage. I may have had stabilization off, but uh, I don't vlog that much. <laughs> anyway, thanks again. If you want to find out about this, links will be below. A massive thank you to Derek for sending this out again. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I think this might be one of my main vlogging mics moving forward. Coming up on the channel, I'm gonna put this against four or five other different microphones. I think this might win, but we'll find out on a future video. Subscribe, click the bell, catch you soon. See ya.